Okay, so we are reading Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16 to 21. Galatians 5 from verse 16 to verse 21. The title says the works, the works of the flesh. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Wonderful Father, eternal King of Kings. Father, we bless you. We bless your name. We lift you up. Holy Spirit, we welcome you right now to come and speak into our hearts. Speak to us, Lord. Let us not just listen. Don't let it fall on stony grounds. Let our hearts be moist. Let, O oh Lord, our heart be like moist soil, fertile soil, that when your word drops on it like seed, it will sink in and grow and bear good fruit. Father, let your word reprove and correct us. Let us not take offense at what we are going to hear, but instead let us use it as a torchlight to search our hearts, search our inner being, search ourselves and say, Lord, you have spoken, I have heard, but I am powerless. Help me to do it your way. Give me that spirit of humility to listen to you and to live according to what you want me to live by. Thank you, God, because your hands are soft. You, you, we, you, you, you mold us. All we want is to be soft, clear, so that you will mold us. Because your hands are gentle. Mold us into what you want us to be. And help us to live that life, that perfect life that you want us to live. Because the blood of Jesus paid the price of all our sins. And we are supposed to live his life. So, Lord, help us to live the Christ-like life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So for those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. We have heard so much in the last uh, weeks. Today we, we read in the Psalms who, who, who will go to the heel of the Lord. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Isn't it? That's uh, Psalm 24. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? The hill of the Lord is a holy place. Who can go into the presence of God, the, the holy presence of God? The God we worship is not sticks and stones. The God we worship is holy. He is perfect. And so who can go into his presence? Who can stand in his holy place? The Bible says, those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who do not lift up their souls to idol worshipping. Idol worshipping is not just when you bow down to a wooden thing. It's also, it can be your job that you cherish more than God. It can be your wife, your husband, your child, your, your car, your, anything that you replace with God is an idol. Anything that you say, oh, no, let me not. Uh, Jesus, can you wait? Let me do this. So you are worshipping that instead of worshipping Jesus. God forbid that we should put anything before Jesus. Amen? Amen. So we, 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 we just want to allow the Holy Spirit 
to, to point his light into our lives today and help us because time is short. We don't have time anymore. God has been patient and patient and patient. As we can see, the world is not getting better, it's getting worse. So time is running out. Jesus came and died 2,000 years ago. And he kept saying, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. But each time the father wants to say, you know, time is up, Jesus will say, Father, think of my blood that I paid, that I shed for them. My, let my blood not go in vain. So this is our place to stand and say, we are here to live the Jesus life. Amen? And the Jesus life is not a cozy life. Yes, as a Christian, you are protected from the enemy, but you are not protected from tribulation. You, tribulation will come like the three boys who went into the fire, but you have to be ready to go into the fire first before God can protect you. If you love your life and say, no, I cannot go into the fire, then God cannot protect you. You see, it's, it's tricky. You cannot love your life unto death. You cannot love your life more than Jesus. He died for you. It is his life that we are living. So the title for this message today is Not a Cozy Fire, Not a Walk in the Park. The message is, you see, the message is fire, but it's not that kind of living room fire that you put on in winter to, to warm yourself and it's, and it's crackling and it's, it's, it's beautiful and you sit there and warm yourself. No, not a cozy fire, not a walk in the park. It's not a stroll. We are soldiers. We are end time armies. If Jesus died, and said, in this world, you will have many tribulations. If Jesus said it, it is true. We will have many tribulations. But what did he say? But be of good cheer. Don't let that bother you. Why? Because I have already overcome the world. See, Jesus died for your sin and for my sin, even before we sinned it. He knew we will sin. And he, and he paid the price for that sin. So all we have to do now is to approach him and say, Mercy, Lord, I accept your blood. I accept your suffering. Now give me your life to live. We cannot die for ourselves. If we die in sin, we are dying to destruction. But one man died for our sin. And all we have to do is to accept him. We exchange our sinful life with his perfect life so that the life that we now live is not our sinful life, it's the beautiful, perfect life of Jesus. That life that is fearless, that life that is overcomer, that life that is perfect, that life that, that does not fear death because it is not your life. Not a cozy fire not a walk in the path. If you have in your mind that once you say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come and live in my heart. Be my, be my Lord. Thank you for you know, your, your gift of salvation. And you think, ah, from now on I can float in the clouds. That's a lie. That's a lie. We, we don't, once you, you, you sign up, you are like, Jesus, I'm for you. Where you go, I go. So this is a soldier life now. Where you go, I go. What you say, I do. I live in obedience and I live in submission. Because without you, I would be burning in hell. But you paid the price. And you gave me eternal life. This is not cheap. It does not come cheap. The power, we've been studying Ephesians, and we, we, have, we have heard how much power that we have, how much authority. Yes, we have that. You have, why do you have the authority? Because it's Christ's authority. 
We are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We rule with Christ. We are co-heirs with Christ. Everything, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. It belongs to Christ. It belongs to us. Yeah, that's all true. But does it come cheap? No, Jesus paid the price. And Jesus said, the, the servant is not greater than the master. Pick up your cross and follow me. And don't think that you are doing it alone in your strength. If you think you are doing it alone in your strength, then you haven't accepted me. You are not doing it alone in your strength. Whatever you are going through, say, Jesus, you went through this. Help me, please. That's why the Holy Spirit is called helper. For God to be your helper, that should make us humble. So we have all this power and all this authority bestowed on us, Christians. We shouldn't trivialize it. We shouldn't make it like a, 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 a simple thing, like a trifle. We shouldn't, we shouldn't take it for granted. Yet we have more power than we, we can even think of or imagine. We have more authority as Christians than we can think of or imagine. Because with God, everything is endless. The, the more you want, the more he gives you. The more you pay the price, the more you receive the reward. So God cannot allow one person to fast and fast and fast and pray, and then another person to just come in and say, okay, he fasted and prayed, I'll take the reward. No, we, are, we, we have to pay our own price. Others wake up early and go to work, they receive the money. Others want to sit at home and receive the same. No, it cannot be the same. You may be given something to live on, but what, what satisfaction is that? You didn't work for it. You, you won't even enjoy it. You won't even know how to spend it. The God is not a lazy God. God wants us to work. He, he created the whole world. And he has given us this world to rule in, with him and for him. That's a big responsibility, but it's also a very, very big privilege to rule with God. We shouldn't take it for granted. We shouldn't disregard the, the, the authority we have. We shouldn't trivialize it. We have great responsibility to represent Jesus in life or in death. He, he lived and died for us, the same thing he expects of us. Everybody's calling is not the same. So ask the Holy Spirit, what is it you want me to do for you? What are we doing today, Holy Spirit? What is my, my duty? What is my objective? What is my plan? What's my purpose? Because God says the, the plans I have for you are good and not evil. So ask God. We must understand the times in which we live and then whose life we are living. Then it will all make sense. If we are still struggling uh, in, in guilt, you know, and, 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 and struggling and, and always, always guilty, always confused, then, then we haven't accepted Jesus because Jesus came to liberate the blood of Jesus wipes away, wipes, wipes away all our sins once you've confessed it with all your heart. So are we dead to sin or are we still living as sinners? The message today is to die to sin. The message today is to die to self. That's why I said, this is not a cozy fire to warm yourself with. It's not a stroll in the park. This is boot camp. So we have to ask ourselves, am I dead to self? And this is what the Holy Spirit told me, word for word. If it does not put a demand on the flesh, then it is not of Jesus. If it does not, so that it, you can put whatever word you want to put. This is what I heard. This is what I'm telling you. 
if it does not put a demand on the flesh, then it's not of Jesus. The flesh must die. Anything that you do that is still gratifying the flesh, that is still feeding the flesh, has nothing to do with Jesus. Nothing. The flesh must be crucified. The flesh must die. That's why Jesus had to die that death to show you how it must be done. Because the law demands that the flesh must die in order that we can live by grace. In law, by law, it says, whoever sins must die, right? That's what the law says. The punishment of sin is death. And we have all sinned. But Jesus came and paid the price for you and me. So now he says, you don't have to die that kind of death anymore you can live by my grace i give you my grace that's what he told paul my grace is sufficient for you my grace is enough for you don't say you are suffering don't say you are poor don't say this and that just focus on me if your flesh is not taxed if 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 what you are doing does not make your flesh to 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 feel uncomfortable like waking up on a sunday morning while others are having their lie in that puts a strain on the flesh your brain will be telling you oh you don't have to be there let others go oh you can just sleep up by 12 o'clock there's a show in town you can go and watch that one so it must it, the, it must pinch your flesh. If it does not put a demand on the flesh, then it's not, it's not of God. It's not of God. Because God is perfect. He says already, the, the wide road, many will choose it. And that wide road leads to destruction. But the, the way that leads to eternal life is only a small part. A narrow path and only a few find it because only a few are ready to pay the price only a few are ready to pay the price we want it easy oh let me just sleep one more hour oh let me just eat one more plate but God says watch and pray fast and pray this is a wake up call this is a wake up call. If we turn to that Galatians that we are reading, if we check, we were reading from chapter 5, if we just go two pages backwards to chapter 2, Galatians 2, verses 19 and 20 will explain what I'm trying to say. So I hope you you kept your your Bible open on those places. So Galatians chapter two, verse nineteen and twenty. For through the law I died to the law. That's what Paul is saying. Through the law, like I said earlier, law says whoever sin must die. The 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 wages of sin is death. Yeah. So Paul is saying in Galatians 2 verse 19, Through the law, I died to the law, so that I might live to God. For it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in this flesh, I live by faith, in the Son of God, who loved me enough, who loved me so much, and gave himself for me. That's what I'm trying to say. You have to allow this flesh to be crucified so you can live in God. And that is a privilege. It's a privilege to be able to live in God. While others are suffering to obey law, your only law is, 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's the only law you and I are expected to keep. Others think, oh, I shouldn't steal, oh, I shouldn't kill. And the more you think of kill, steal, destroy, you are doing the work of Satan. Because in yourself you have no power to stop yourself from doing evil. Until you live in God, then the law is abolished in your life. Through the law, Paul says, I died to the law that I might live, in, live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified. Jesus died for me, I died. So now Jesus lives for me, I live. I don't have to bother about, don't kill, don't steal, don't fornicate, don't do this, don't do, this, don't do that. Because you are living God's life. It is no longer I who live because I have exchanged my sinful life to a perfect life of Jesus. It's no longer, you have to be bold. You have to know who you are. It's not me. The, if you see me stand here and you think, oh, I knew her 20 years ago. I knew who she was. No, that person is dead. That Victoria is dead. This is a new Victoria. This is Christ Jesus standing in front of you. Because I have left the whole life. I have died to the, my old self. And now day by day, by the grace of God, I am living the life of Christ. I am the living Jesus. I am representing Jesus now. Because he has given me his life to live now. Paul says it there and it applies to everybody. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live, even in this flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That's just it. That's just it. So don't struggle to do good. Just look on Jesus. Call on Jesus. If you are living in Christ, you don't have to struggle. Just ask him for help. And don't forget, death to the flesh is not instantaneous. It's not hocus pocus, it's not magic. You, it is a gradual walk. It's a relationship. The more you make up your mind, to know Jesus, like, like you meet somebody and you like the person. Every other day you call the person up. Hey, how are you? Oh, can we meet? Can you come for dinner? Can you, you know? The, it, 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 that's how you, you, you build a relationship. And that's exactly what we do with Jesus. A daily walk. You wake up. Good morning, Jesus. How are you today? What can we do today? That death to self begins in, at Gethsemane. Just in the case of Jesus. Just as in the case of Jesus. Gethsemane is a place of brokenness. When you have recognized that you, you cannot help yourself. It's a place of surrender. It's a place of watching and praying. That's what Jesus did at Gethsemane. That's where death to self begins. You surrender, you are humble, you are broken, and then you go to God in prayer and fasting. You reject me and take Jesus. That you reject the me, the self, the, the flesh. You reject what, what I want. What I want, what I want, me, 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 me. No, you reject that. That's how the flesh dies. You wake up in the morning, you want to eat, you're like, no, I will leave this breakfast, I will fast today. 
That's why it's called breakfast because you should eat it after fasting through the night. You, we have to fast. These words didn't just come up. People of old knew what they were doing. They were not just eating right, left, and center as we are doing today. Sleeping 20 hours a day. We have to learn to reject what the flesh wants sometimes. And accept what God wants. Not loving our lives unto death. Not thinking that, oh, because I'm not eating one day, I'm going to die. No, you will surely not die. There are people all around the world who are actually starving for God knows how long. They are not dead yet. And if you have made up your mind not just to die yet, but to commit that time to, to reading your Bible and praying, the, the power of the Holy Spirit will overwhelm you and you come out fresher than you ever thought. Moses was 40 days and 40 nights in the, in, in, on the mountain with God. We, he did not take any lunch. He didn't have any lunch pack. It was the glory of God that kept him. And that is the, still the same God that we are worshipping. The same God we are calling on. It, how much have we surrendered? How much have we recognized that this God is who he says he is? When we say we have all the power and the authority, that we truly know that we have it. Instead of thinking, oh, I'm not eating, it's 12 o'clock. No. You can drink if you must. But, you know, pushing... I wear two plates in a day and having one meal in the evening does not, that is even more than you need. It's really more than anybody needs. If you offer it to Christ, he will give you, your reward will be more than those two meals that you miss, breakfast and lunch. You offer it to him. Lord, I am living, I am rejecting my breakfast and lunch. And I want to spend that time with you. Because the reward that I will have in your presence can never, ever, ever be compared to two to, 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 to plates of meals. Can never. The, the, what you receive in the presence of God can never, ever be compared to anything. So it is up to us. How much have we surrendered? I surrender. Oh, yeah, we sing that and we sound like angels. Have we truly surrendered? Have we truly come to that place of brokenness? Have we truly come to that place of realizing that somebody actually died for my sin? I sinned against him and he came to, to take that sin away and die in my place. I did not even sin against any other person. I sinned against him. And he chose to still forgive me and die in my place. How awesome is that? So all we can do is to come humbly to him and say thank you. And surrender to him. So the question is, if I still nurture the flesh more than the spirit, then the journey has not yet begun. We have to make up our minds to start that journey today. Amen? We have to make up our minds to start that journey today because this is the day of salvation. The day of salvation is always one day. That's why the Bible says, if today, if today, not if tomorrow or yesterday, if today you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Today is the day of salvation. And the way up is down. That means to be lifted up, you must first humble yourself. Forsake all these self-seeking desires. Oh, I have to go do a nose job because my nose is just not standing where it should stand. I have to go and, and, and do this and shape this and do that. No, die to self. When you die to self, all that doesn't matter anymore. How much does a dead body feel? Zero. 
A dead body doesn't feel anything. Self-seeking desires only causes us to miss the plan of God in our lives. Not a cozy fire, not a walk in the park, but obedience and humility. Patiently waiting in humility before God. Starve the flesh and feed the spirit. God wants more for you than you can even think of or imagine. But we must do it His way so that His power and authority can work in us. That's why that Galatians 5 that we read, it starts with live by the spirit. Live by the spirit. Don't, don't you know, keep gratifying the flesh. Galatians 5, 16. Live by the Spirit. I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. The flesh must die so that God can be glorified. So that Jesus can come and live in you. Two people will not share that space. Jesus says, it's either me or it's you. It's either me or sin. It's either me or Satan. So make, make up your mind. It is his power, it is his name, it is his authority that we are using. So we have to give him space in our lives. So this is supposed to ignite and spark a fire in us today. Take that fire into the world. Do not just sit down and warm yourself with it. The sun is shining while it is day. And while it is day, we need to work hard. While it is day, because very soon it will be night. What I'm talking about is time is running out. We don't have time to play games anymore. The sun is there. We should not waste the time playing in the park and lying around at the seaside. We need the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We need to wake up. We cannot fail on this journey. Because the price is too high. The price is too delicate. The price is, is, too, is too special for us to miss. We cannot miss. God has trusted us with so much, we can't even disappoint him. And you can't, you can't afford to even disappoint yourself. Because if you read that Galatians 5 again, it tells you all the things that you need to avoid. But I want to take us to the end of end of six. Galatians six. In conclusion. Galatians six verse fifteen. Okay, let, let me start. No, let, let me just read from eleven down, okay? Let's just be patient for that, this is the last I'm closing. See what large letters I make when I'm writing in my own hand. So Paul is saying, these letters are large enough. So you cannot say I couldn't read, yeah? <laughs> it, is, it is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised. So Paul is saying it's not, it's not physical work, it's spiritual work. Only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. If you preach the cross, if you preach the truth, people will come against you. Because people want you to be politically correct. You say, no, I want to be biblically correct. We want to work with the Bible, not with the politics. Verse 13. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law. But they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. No. No. So it's not about the flesh. May I never, 14, that's where I want us to take, con, uh, uh, take note of. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. By which the world, the world, the world, not just a handful of people, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. 
For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. When you are born again, that's everything. Not not like the Jews, just if you just do physical circumcision, you know. So it's not the work of the flesh, it's the work of the spirit. Verse 16. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them. This and this is what I'm speaking over you right now. For those who will who will follow what we are talking about, peace be upon them and mercy and upon and, and mercy and upon Israel of God. Verse 17. For from now on, Paul is declaring. This is a declaration that I will I would like all of us to, to, to make up our minds to declare. From now on, from this day on, let no one make trouble for me, for I carry the mark of Jesus branded on my body. Amen? Amen. We carry the mark of Christ. We are the living Jesus. From now on, let no one trouble me. Don't come with your worldly principles. Don't come with your political correctness. I do not deal with that. I have the mark of Christ on my body. And then he ends it. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. And I say amen to that as well. And may God look on our struggles and grant us that crown that we are forever focusing on and may we receive our crown for eternity in jesus name amen amen amen